So negotiation is basically, it is a conversation between or a dialogue between two or more parties to reach an agreement. Okay, so the intention here is for you to reach a mutual, uh, mutually beneficial outcome. So that's what we are trying to achieve, regardless if it's a if multiple issues basha or, or where we have we have conflicting issues. It doesn't matter. What matters is that there is a dialogue between two or more parties. And the goal is to reach an achievement. Why do we need to negotiate? Why negotiation skills matter? Okay, why does it matter? It is a common part of everyone's life, guys. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, okay, still. All right, so negotiation is not just seen in companies. Even our daily lives, it happens. We use it. We have that. Okay. Let's cite an example. When do you use your negotiation skills sa bahay? Ako, I have a three-year-old. It's an everyday negotiation with my three-year-old. You know? Anak, pwede bang mamaya na? Because this. Later, because this. Later, do you want to watch TV? Okay, let's eat first. So those are negotiation skills. Uh, sorry, I just it was unintentional when I said negotiation skills because it kills me really. But it is a skill that is needed in our everyday lives. Okay, so I'd like to I'd like you to share at least one one experience everyday life. New, you use your negotiation skills. I've not heard from. Let me call. How about Rem? You don't have a camera, so I'm going to call you. Yes, Rem. Any experience, personal experience with negotiation? Um, for me, yung kasi ang nag-handle ako ng, ano, ng CapEx project. So, more on dealings ko is sa mga ano, suppliers, ka contractors. So, oh, that's work. That's work. How life? Sorry? How about personal life? Uh, negotiation. Yes. Siguro sa, for me sa sarili, parang, pag, kunyar, papasok ka sa umaga, yung parang, mm. uh, ano ba, parang, papasok na ba ako, mamaya muna. Parang ganun. Para, <laughs> papasok parang, na ako, mamaya na. Okay. Uh, parang, nag-anak pa ng fine time pa sa sarili mo, parang, nagmamuni-muni ka pa. Or parang, Oh, may oras pa naman siguro mag-ano muna ako read something or ano. Parang yung may pag-negotiate. Kape muna. Kape muna tayo. Oh, kape muna. Break muna. Uh, ganun. Okay. All right. That's a good one. That's a good one. See? Good. Thank you for sharing, Rem. Gusto ko yan, ha? Papasok ko ba ako? <laughs> How about, Nico? How about you? Any personal experience? Uh, Siguro negotiation is you. Kasi it, nasa sales naman kami, ma'am. Uh, siguro in terms of negotiation, uh, we do every day. And then sometimes for personal, they negotiate mo kung siguro kung saan kakakain o ganun for that. Hmm. So, yun, yun lang lang siguro, ma'am. That's a very good example. Saan tayo kakain? Ang tanong niya, saan ka kain? Kahit saan? Mahal lang kahit saan. Right? So, very, very simple negotiation skill there. Doon tayo sa mahal, hindi pa sweldo. Doon tayo sa mura muna. Right? Okay, good. Thank you, Nico. How about... I'd like to hear from a woman. Uh, Rachel, how about you? Personal experience. Personal experience ko po sa pag... Na, siguro yun din, yung sa sarili din po, na yung ano pa yung dapat ko munang gagawin? Or ano, ngayari pagpapasok, ganun din. Ano ba yung mga dapat, ano ba yung susuotin ko pagpapasok ako? Ano ba yung maganda? Ano? Uh, uh, <laughs> mag-make up pa ba? Or wag na? <laughs> 
Ang dami. Okay. That's very true. Like, when you, first thing you do in the morning, ano susuot ko? Bukas ng cabinet. Pero ba dapat ang bag? Pero ba ng shoes? Magbimake up ba ako? Saan ba ako magbimake up? Dito na ba? Sa office na. Okay. Those are part of your daily life. Those are your routine and those are negotiation skills. Okay? Negotiation skills are not just only relevant for or important to professionals throughout the course of our lives. Meron tayong yan. Okay? Regular people ka ba? We, we negotiate for a reason eh. We sometimes give ourselves reasons not to do things. Right? Now, in, in the workplace, these negotiation skills, it helps us achieve a long-term career success. Okay, it, it also boosts uh, productivity. It also reduces workplace conflicts, just like what you guys did earlier during the activity. May na give in, may na give way, because they wanted to avoid conflicts. Okay? So, meron tayong negotiation dual concern model. Okay? Now, this model assumes that parties preferred method of handling conflict. Dalawa yan. One is concern for self and the other one is concern for other people. Okay? The concern for self, can we can say it as assertiveness. Concern for others can be tagged as empathy or um, the other term is cooperativeness, okay? And there are attributes, characteristics that you guys need to remember to understand this model. You have competition, collaboration, compromising, avoidance, and accommodation. Okay, so I'd like us to watch a short clip to explain this model further okay please let me know if you guys can hear hi everyone today i wanted to discuss the dual concern model okay thank you when we look at the dual concern model the dcm assumes that parties preferred method of handling conflict is based on two underlying dimensions assertiveness and empathy the assertiveness dimension focuses on the degree to which one is concerned with satisfying one's own needs and interests. Conversely, the empathy or cooperativeness dimension focuses on the extent to which one is concerned with satisfying the needs and interests of the other party. The intersection points of these dimensions lands us in different conflict styles. It is always helpful not only to realize your own conflict style, but to appreciate the style that your opposite number is using. The first one. A competitive conflict style maximizes assertiveness and minimizes empathy. Competitive types enjoy negotiation, seek to dominate and control the interaction, and tend to look at it at a game or a sport with a winner and a loser. They pay less attention to the relationship underlying the dispute since they are focused on winning and claiming the biggest piece of the pie. Competitive types approach conflict saying, this looks like a win-lose situation and I want to win. The next type. An accommodating conflict style, in contrast, maximizes empathy and minimizes assertiveness. Accommodating types derive satisfaction from meeting the needs of others, are perspective and intuitive about emotional states, detect subtle verbal and nonverbal cues, and tend to have a good relationship building skills. They tend to deflect or give up in the face of conflict out of concern for the relationship and tend to be vulnerable to competitive types. Accommodating types tend to believe that being agreeable may be more important than winning. The next type, avoiding. An avoiding conflict style is both low in assertiveness and low in empathy. Avoiders can be adept to sidestepping pointless conflict, are able to exercise tact and diplomacy in high conflict situations, and can artfully increase their own leverage 
by waiting for others to make the first concession. At the same time, however, they may leave money on the table and miss the opportunities for mutual gain that conflict can present, neglect underlying relationships, and allow problems to fester by ignoring them. Avoiding types worry that I don't want to give in, but I don't want to talk about it either. The next type, collaborating. The collaborative types are highly assertive and highly empathic at the same time. Therefore, they are concerned about the underlying relationship and are sensitive to the other person's needs while simultaneously being committed to having their own needs met. Collaborators often see conflict as a creative opportunity and do not mind investing the time to dig deep and find a win-win solution, but may be inclined to spend more time or resources than are called for under the circumstances. Collaborative types approach conflict saying, let's find a way to satisfy both our goals. And the last type, compromising. Finally, a compromising conflict style is intermediate on both the assertiveness and empathy dimensions. Compromisers value fairness and expect to engage in some give and take when bargaining. A compromise approach allows those in conflict to take a reasonable stance that often results in an efficient resolution to the conflict. However, Compromisers sometimes miss opportunities by moving too fast to split the difference, failing to search for trades and joint gains, and may neglect the relational aspects of the dispute. Compromisers approach conflict saying, let's just meet halfway on this issue. So as you can see, we've gone over the five different types and when they look at concern for self and concern for others. And these five different types are just another lens of how we look at how individuals may engage in conflict and how individuals may act naturally when pushed to those particular instances. Okay. All right. So those are the styles on how you negotiate. Were you able to get all? Do you want to discuss it again? Yes, of course, we will discuss it again. Okay. So we have three styles. You have the competitor, accommodator, avoider, compromiser, and the collaborator. As what the video said, a competitor uh, or a competitive conflict style, you are the person who maximizes assertiveness, you minimize empathy, you enjoy competition. Okay, you seek to, uh, to dominate and to control interaction. You also tend to look at it as a, a sport. I have to win this. Okay, that's why you're called a competitor. Okay, accommodator, on the other hand, are the ones na normally they would contrast. They would maximize empathy and minimize yung assertiveness. Okay. Um, it derives you know, satisfaction from meeting the needs of the other people. Sila yung, sige, let's give in. Yeah, yung mga giving person, yan sila. They're very, they're also very intuitive when it comes to uh, emotional estate. They also tend to have good relationship building skills. So sila yung mga accommodators natin. Avoiders naman, ito naman yung parehong um, both assertiveness and empathy is low. Okay, they are, they're able to exercise the tact, tact and diplomacy in high co conflict situations. Sila yung, uh, what they call this, they can artfully increase their leverage by waiting for others to make the first concessions. Sila yung, uh, what do you call this? Ah, sige, oh, yun na rin yun. You know, they are that, those are the kinds of um, people na, uh, I have the same answer. So those are our avoiders, right? Collaborators, or collaborators rather, ito naman yung mga tao na empathetic sila, very empathetic. 
Okay, uh, the the styles that they have is highly assertive and highly empathetic. They're very concerned about the uh, underlying relationship that you have or you're about to build. So sila yung mga collaborators natin. Okay, so another um, thing about collaborative or collaborators, they see conflict as a creative, creative way of, um, or an opportunity rather, okay? And they don't mind investing time to dig deeper. Sila yung mga, okay lang yan, sige, let's do this. Planuhin natin, this and that. Okay, I, I think a good example was what, um, who was this earlier? Uh, I think it was RJ who did that earlier. Yep, am I correct? RJ, you did that earlier. Okay, good. And the last style is the compromising style. Um, ito yung intermediate lang naman yung level ng assertiveness and empathy. Okay, they, they basically value fairness and they expect to engage in some give and take you know, while bargaining. So, nandun yung, this kind of person is yung mahilig mag-weigh things. Okay, they try to, they're on the perspective we're in, may pros and cons tayo, identify muna natin, and then we go from there. Those are your compromisers. 